Welcome to the first of our two-part program on how to build the Pico LK55 turntable kit. In the first of this two-part feature, we will be demonstrating how to construct and cut the baseboard to fit your turntable. In the second film, we will look at wiring and the installation of the new Pico turntable motor. First of all, you need the right tools to do the job and we recommend the Pico Tools Kit Builders Toolset, the PT200. You will also require liquid poly cement and an array of paints and weathering colours of your choice. To cut the hole in your baseboard, you will also require either a jigsaw, a pad saw or as we'll be using, a router. The design of this kit is based upon the turntable at Yeovil Junction. The length of the deck is approximately 304mm which is 12 inches. This represents the scale of 76 feet and therefore capable of holding the longest of British steam engines. First of all, lay out all your kit's components to familiarise yourself with all its parts. We have also provided clear and easy to follow instructions with a full size template which can be used to help position and cut your baseboard. We are painting and weathering our components as we go as it is far easier to paint as individual components rather than trying to paint when constructed. We start off with the bridge. Cement the bridge sides and place on the deck. Then cement the retaining clips and then cement the plunger house underneath the turntable deck. Then cement the bearing block into position ensuring it is pushed fully home on the plunger housing and into the location on the bridge sides. Locate the plunger contact and springs into the plunger housing. You can do this by putting them through the top of the deck and then slide the rail in place whilst pushing the spring down. The rail will hold the spring in place. When the rails are in position on the deck, make sure that they do not protrude at either end and will not touch the rails of the approaching track. When satisfied all is well, glue the rails into place to prevent any movement. Position the handrails on the deck and cement into place. Next, remove the two halves of your outrigger frame from their plastic housing and note the correct orientation. Some filing and preparation will be required for good smooth running. And obviously when painting, make sure you don't apply any paint to the axle as this will stop your wheels from freely rotating. Once you have assembled your outriggers, place them onto the underside of each end of your deck. Now place the deck to one side as we turn our attention to the well. Place the turntable well segments on a flat surface and ease them together. When assembled, fix in place by applying cement along the joints of the underside of the well. Then cement the drain covers into place, allowing it to set hard. Bend all three tags on each of the two contacts down at 90 degrees with a pair of pliers. Fit the two contacts into the recesses and bearings. Bend all three tags on each of the two contacts down at 90 degrees. A pair of pliers will help keep these bends sharp. Then cement the bearing assembly to the middle of the upper surface of the well. Locate the two long tags through the appropriate holes in the well. Turn the model over and attach the wires to the two long tags. The wires can either be soldered or they can be bent and crimped into place, although I would personally recommend soldering them for better reliability.
locate the assembly bridge unit into the well and ensure ease of rotation. Gently ease the retaining collar into place over the main deck until it is pushed lightly against the underside of the well. After a final check that all is well, carefully cement the collar into place by applying cement to the outside only, ensuring ease of rotation of the bridge whilst the cement is setting. In preparation before cutting the hole in your baseboard, you need to position it exactly where you want it. You need to work out where all your buildings are going to go and where your tracks are going to be laid. We have provided a full-size template which can be used to assist in cutting the hole in your baseboard and to help with track laying. Using a protractor, measure 155 millimeters from the center point of your turntable and draw a circle. The pencil line is a guide for whichever way you wish to cut the hole in your baseboard. Then, once marked out, cut your hole. In this case, we're going to be using a router to cut the circle out of our baseboard. Once you've removed the cut disc from your baseboard, again measure across the diameter to check your hole is big enough and the right size. Then simply place the turntable in the hole and check it fits. In the next film we will look at fitting the PL55 turntable motor, laying track and wiring for electrical connectivity. We look forward to seeing you for the second part and we hope you enjoyed the first in this two-part special series, all about the Pico LK55 turntable.